Nampak ni The screen is part dollar screen. So the screen's been here forever? Yeah, uh, and it's part of the inheritance. So the puppets, the instruments, most of them are from him. Right. It's part of the belief that, you know, the more that you use his material, the more his mastery will inhabit you. His name is Saupi. Uh, he's now the leading puppeteer in the whole of the state uh, and he was a student of uh, Dalang Abdullah Ibrahim. What is the most difficult thing about puppeteering? Masa oh, prayer. Uh, during the dual scene. Kenapa uh, susah? Susah pasal kita celisih, celisih patu. Kalau kita tak jago, dia melago. Now you mentioned that there's also love. It's about love. Yeah. How do they emote love in puppeteering? Macam mana suara bila nak bercinta tu? Berasmara uh, buah. Ha. Ni dia nak make. Ni dia nak make. Pelanduk putih. Pelanduk putih. Putin sulu. Putin sulu. Ha, dia pun jawab. Kalau betul begitu, telah pun dikudu. <laughs> tak apalah, dek. Tak apalah, dek. Boleh habis pergi. Boleh habis? Pergi. Pergi. Orek. Orek. <laughs> Macho. <laughs> <laughs> As night envelops the land, this village gets ready to enjoy the evening's entertainment. I get the chance to step back behind the light into the shadows. Into a legendary world of laughter and love that captivates audiences for hours. Different styles of Wayang Kulit have been performed for centuries all over the Malay archipelago. Wayang Kulit Kelantan uses localized versions of epic tales as well as improvised stories composed on the fly. All hinging on the incredible powers of the Dalang. Dalang Selpi has over a hundred figures, giving each its proper symbolism and stance, commanding just the right tone and pitch. As apprentice for the night, I try my best to keep up, but I'm way out of my league. Because this is artistry of the highest realm. Coming up, cruising the kampongs of Kelantan reveals the secrets of the simple life. He's probably gonna dump it on us. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh there you go. I feel like this is Star Wars. <laughs> Their first taste of Malay village or kampung life in Kelantan sparked an irresistible urge for Harry and Anna Mulder. Can you hope it's not too strong? Perfect. They packed up their lives in Holland and moved the whole family over. Today, they run a homestay resort right in the heart of a kampung outside Kota Baru. We talked about it that we would like to have a place like this. You know, with trees and, you know, spacious, yeah. in the kampong. Mm. So when we were brought here by an old Englishman, uh -huh. I was just like, wow, this, this cannot be true. What specifically about the kampong life that you love so much? 
I think it's the relaxed lifestyle. Be carefree and relax. Yeah. We like to interact with the people and just enjoy the life of uh, Kelantan. This is the best way to get to know the Kampong life, huh? Yeah, you see how the people live. Yeah, this is still relax. 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 They have this nice English word here as well in Malay. They say relax. Relax. I think we have company. Where are you going? Di mana? Jalan-jalan. For Harry, the lure of Kampong life is in the therapy of simplicity. And here in Kelantan, it's the little sprinkles of flavor that keep it interesting. Here. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's she doing? I like to show you the place where they make the kropok. As usually, I like snacks in between. When you, you come in, drop in somewhere, they serve you some drinks together with the kropok. Kropok leko is ubiquitous on the East Coast. Made with ground fish, sega flour, and salt, it's served as whole fish sausages or sliced into crispy crackers. Kana, you are Yana. Don't mess with her. Have a look at the Ayam Sarama here. They all take part in contests. Oh! Because they're so beautiful. How they, Supermodel chicken. How they put up their breasts. Yeah. yeah. When my son, he's four years old, when he saw them the first time, he immediately started to imitate them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Chest out. But yeah, let them, but they also they use shampoo like every day, shampoos them. Oh, really? And then uh, this with, uh, with some grease to make it more shiny. Sometimes. Lucky Chantik. Oh, Even better, eh? that one's very proud. Show off, huh? You want to show me your chest? Yeah. Well, I'm pretty supermodel yeah. too. <laughs> Hello. It must be so different coming from Holland. Such it a is. contrast. Yeah, very different. I was living in a city, in a small city. I came this first time to Kotobaru. Yeah. I thought this part is the best of Malaysia. What exactly drew you here? Yeah, it's part of adventure and part of like a calling maybe in your life. Yeah, that's something right. you're attracted to do. To me, the real attraction of Kelantan lies with the people and their innate artistry. They really look yeah. like birds. Everywhere you go, it's there, subtly decorating the land and sky. Wow. Go wow. That's how it got his name, eh? Wow. It's like a bird in the sky. I want to ride my bicycle, I want to ride my bike. The kampungs are full of cottage industries built on the Kelantanese love of craft. The kite wow making. maker. Wow, a colorful kite that's a beauty to behold. But you need a lot of patience to make one. Sure, sure. Yeah. This way. Yeah. Ah. Can't do it. He does it much faster than I do. Yeah. I never told you about my phobia of nice. It always looks easier than it really is. I'm trying not to cut my fingers off. Uh -oh. As a kite maker, what makes a, a wow kite so special? Is it the process of making it or seeing it in flight? What is it? 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 What is all patience and a lot of love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The real wow factor in this icon of the East Coast resonates beyond its decorative qualities. And so can you hear it from afar? Far, far. Kilometers. And does every cat make a different wow? Uh, yeah. A different sound? Yeah. 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 Depends on the size. So what kind of sound does it make? Yeah. Sound. Bulika? 
I feel like this is Star Wars. Wow, 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 Back at Harry's Homestay Resort Passe Belanda, I meet a local artisan with very particular tastes. Minum, minum. Minum, minum. Here it seems there's a fine art and sense of craftsmanship applied to pretty much everything. Hey, this is spot gin and he has three of them. Uh-huh. And when people have fields like this with their coconuts, uh -huh. coconut trees, so when they think, well, it's time for coconut picking them, juice and they call him. We should be careful because when he's going up, he'll drop he'll the drop coconut. Yeah. Go, get it. Go. yeah, just. Wow. Go. He's quick. Yeah. He's twisting it. Yeah, he twists it. <laughs> he's probably going to dump it on us. Go that side. Up. Oh, there we go. Boom. Oh, oh there you go. Shows them well, a young coconut. Oh, oh that looks great. Good mm. Monkey gets saucy and we get coconut. What an irony. Well, it seems like you're really settled in here. I mean, kids come in and play and... Uh -huh. Would you actually trade this to go back to Europe? Ah, uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> uh, but we just live, I think, by the season. Mm. The way it's going like now, we love it very much, so we just want to continue like that. But yeah. now it's home, yeah. From the kampongs of Kelantan, I head back to Trungano for a royal feast. I'm the queen princess! Then I have to work it all off on a crash course of regal fabric. I don't want to work with her. Fire her now! From Kelantan, I head south to the capital of Trungganu. It's not a short trip down the coast, but most Malaysians will tell you every journey is worth it when it comes to food. For writer Dina Zaman, a good breakfast of nasi dagang is reason enough to travel back from Kuala Lumpur to her hometown. In Kelantan, you also have nasi dagang, mm -hmm. but the colors are a bit different. Right. You put blue and all that. And it's also sweeter. Done. And this recipe is passed down generation to generation. Passed down for generations and all that. So, you know, every area you go, things is almost the same, but each family has its own secret. Slightly different. Yeah. Mm, I can't wait. So, usually, Chungano breakfasts are really rich. You know, after that, you have this kraman, mm -hmm. it's deep fried bread. It's sweet, it's nice, it's also very addictive, but my god, you will be exercising the whole week after this. <laughs> I think what's good with Trunganu, right? It's comfort food. There's no gourmet food, it's just comfort food. You eat, you're tired, you know. Soul food. Yeah. Because of the family structure in mm. Trunganu, you know, like fishermen, they have erratic times, kids go to school and all. That's why we eat all the time. There's always food at home. So, how often do you come back here? I've got family here. Mm. We've come back like, a few times a year. But lately we're coming back a lot. Because I'm helping Auntie Rosita edit the cookbook. Oh, okay. oh, it's spicy. The book is really interesting. I heard. I mean, it's not just about you know, recipes, it's about the culture. And she's done a lot of work, Auntie. Honey, it's nice spicy. We've got a whole day of eating. <laughs> Dina takes me across town to meet Aunt Rosita, one of her many relatives from Trungano's royal family a clan with a great passion for the arts. And you do this just out of love and passion yeah, and I, I wear them. For fun. I wear them. Oh, it's stunning. Supermodel work. Come girl. I think if anything about the family, I think there's always this appreciation for the literary, for the arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been inculcated in us since we were kids. Mm -hmm. This picture was taken by my late father-in-law. Almahom Sultan Ismail Nasaruddin Shah. You also trace the heritage of Trungano food. 
auntie has, has actually enlightened a lot of us who are involved about mm. the culture that we've forgotten, the histories that we don't even know about right. on stage. The love for Terengganu is so enormous yeah. that you need to do something to preserve, mm -hmm. especially the recipes. That's my favourite. Oh, this is the laksa. Yeah. I'm so excited. Can we sit down, please, please, please? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Rosita doesn't limit her love for local recipes to writing books. She practices what she preaches, spoiling any stray her nieces turn up with, with the most fantastic flavours. This is a stuff that melts down with all the spices. So you keep coming back for the laksa, huh? This it. You know, the Trangano is always a feast. And the feasting is relentless. Next, it's all the way across town on the hunt for local desserts called kue. God, food, food, food. It's all about food. Kuala Trungano's kue stalls are like culinary laboratories where alchemists experiment with crazy concoctions of colors and names. It's aga aga eggs. No, I feel like a kid in a candy store. They all look so good. How do we choose? Can we have one of each, <laughs> please? That one is called to aji you know? This one's yeah, famous? It's custard egg. What else? What else? What else? We try a little bit of putri mandi. Putri mandi?